What is up, motherfuckers? This is Crudog Gamer bringing you another video for the Fish and Planet for Dummies episodes. This is like episode four or five uh, on you know shit you need to know in the game, and this is kind of a long overdue video because I should have made this quite a few weeks ago when the update came out. But for those of you who still play this game, you're most likely well aware that bottom fishing is a thing now, as well as fishing in Europe, which is where the bottom fishing comes in handy. So I'm going to do my best to run you through everything you need to know about bottom fishing. So to start off with, obviously you're going to need a bottom fishing rod and a spinning reel, right? So any spinning reel will do. You can put a fucking S for double punch or a uh, whatever the, the bremer bremer and this one's a uh, big river 6000 this is stuff i got in a dlc i bought the dlc because i didn't have enough uh in-game cash at the time to fuck with it and i've been experimenting a lot with this stuff and just trying to figure out what works where and how stuff works um especially as far as uh setups for different fish and, and stuff like that so the first thing you're going to need bottom fishing rod and a spinning reel in order to do this. Now you have two options as far as weights go and uh, you're gonna need a weight of some sort. So you have, well three options really. Uh, you have sinkers which are essentially just weights. They, they are just weight, not essentially. You have closed feeders which are enclosed, not, um, so what I'm looking for, not graded or perforated. Um, containers that hold chum and chum is going to come in in a little bit and then you have open feeders that are going to be graded or you know much more uh, perforated uh, chum tubes essentially that's what they are is chum tubes so you're going to need to pick between one of these two and what I do is I'll experiment with both whenever I go to a location like right now I'm in California I know the chum doesn't really matter that much unless I'm fishing for the carp. Now when you get into bottom fishing, sucker fish, um, you know, trash fish like carp and perch and stuff like that, the chum really comes in handy, especially in a lake with little to no flow. Um, those chums really help out a fair amount. And I'll go through like what I use for each situation. So predatorial fish, uh, striped bass, catfish, well not really catfish, but striped bass, pike, uh, chinook salmon, steelhead, stuff like that. Uh, I'll use sinkers for because I want to essentially fish it like a bobber setup. So I won't use a chum tube for those types of fish, the predatorial fish, bass, all that kind of stuff. Now, when I get into fish like catfish and uh, uh, carp, perch, stuff like that, stuff that's trash fish, not necessarily um, you know the fish that'll eat anything. That's what I'm going for with the chum tubes. I'll swap over to the chum tubes for those kinds of fish. And also when I'm fishing somewhere with very little or no flow at all, like um, any of the beginner lakes, the uh, the lake in Europe, uh, Rocky Lake, Colorado, I'll use a chum tube. And that's just, it, it's dependent on the fish as well. If you look at your chums, it'll give you a, you know where you should use it and what types of fish, a small and medium white fish, uh, white bass, perch, carp, shit like that. Um, and then you've got river bottom fish, stuff like that. <coughs> I haven't noticed a huge difference when I am and am not using chum, but sometimes having the chum there helps a lot. So what I'll do is a sinker, especially in a river I like using a sinker. Now if I am in a river and I want to use a chum tube, I always use a chum or a closed feeder tube, right? Closed feeder chum tube. If I'm in a lake or somewhere with little to no flow, I need the chum to actually spread out more. I'll use the open feeder because the water isn't taking it away as much, so it's kind of just flowing. Now, if you have any questions about feeders or anything like that, let me know. The next thing you're going to need to buy are monofilament leaders. Um, now, I match my leader up to my line for the most part. Like right here, I'm using monoliter 0.10, so I think that's like 15 pounds or something like that. I'd have to look. I don't even have 0 0.10 line um, or 0 0.010, whatever you want to call it. So, this is a 13 pound drag 
reel with a 4.5 to 13 pound rod so I try to match that up so my leader isn't like insanely strong but you can if you're gonna err on one side or the other have a stronger leader rather than a weaker leader than what your rod is set up with so you have to have the leader unfortunately and that's just the way it is so uh, <laughs> suck it up and deal with it it'll be okay uh, so once you have all of your stuff set up I would suggest using fluorocarbon line just because you are going for predatory fish most of the time and if the water's clear the fish can't see it as easily and it sinks so it does help a little bit in that aspect at least in my mind you can use monofilament and braid it really doesn't make that much of a difference but I'm using the fluorocarbon just so you guys know what I'm using so after you've got your leader picked out you figured out whether or not you want to use a sinker a closed or open chum tube got your line picked out you have the option when you're using a chum tube I'll swap over to one so you see it of adding a chum now adding a chum is literally as simple as going to your chum right and you have chum aromas and chum bases so chum is essentially just like a, a cake powder type deal so I can take this active feeder and I don't really understand the ratios or proportions or anything like that um, I know it's this many parts you know uh, chum to this many parts water do I just not have enough chum for this shit here we go so I can take this crimson gold and do like 30 parts chum to or 40 parts chum to 30 parts water and I can mix that uh, I can add that to the recipe and then I can take uh, fuck it, I don't really use chum that much, so I'm not losing a whole lot of a lot of sleep here. And I can do um, this many parts chum aroma to uh, water, essentially. So I can add both of those in, and you can add more than one component. You can add in, fuck, I wish I had more, but I can add in more of that. Um, not that I meant to add this, but I don't have enough. I don't have enough chum for this fucking video, because I don't use chum that much. Uh, but you can add in up to two chum bases and two chum aromas, and you can also add chum particles, um, which are just extra pieces that you mix in with the base, and then you hit chum mixing, and in 15 seconds you have your chum that will go into your feeder tube. Now, the advantage and disadvantage of that is uh, that you will have quote unquote more likely of a chance to get a bite because the fish can smell it from further around now does that actually happen all the time no not all the time sometimes this shit works way better having a sinker and just a, a bait on there works better like I'm showing you in California striped bass this works better than what I was doing before and I know this video is long but there's a lot to this shit um, so bait isn't really that important because it's going to be whatever you're fishing for. You know, if you're fishing for trout, you know, you use salmon eggs or artificial eggs, or if you're using, you know, fishing for bass, you use shiners and small minnows. Yeah, you know, just match your bait to whatever fish you're fishing for. Marshmallows and semolina balls for um, carp. You know, you if if you know baits, you'll be able to do this, right? So that's pretty much everything on this part. Oh. You have the option of making your leader longer or shorter to decide whether or not you want the bait to sit closer or further away from the bottom. So I think the max is like 72 inches um, going all the way down. I keep mine at like 48 and 36 because that seems to be when I'm fishing for fish, I kind of like to see which leader works better at that particular time of the day based off of the air pressure in the game and stuff like that or the barometric pressure. Um, so right now I'm at 48 and 36, and that's what's been working for me. So, now that all that's out of the way, I can show you guys how to fish these things, how to know when you're getting a bite, how to know when a fish is on the line, and uh, <clears throat> how to know when to pick the rod up to catch said fish. And also, we might dig into, uh, if it happens, I'm still going to talk about it, but hopefully I'll be able to record it. If it happens, we'll be able to talk about how to catch two fish at the same time. That's one thing that, uh, ah shit, I'm already fucking this up. That's one thing that um, 
this type of fishing does present you with more productivity because you can fight two fish um, alternatingly or at the same time essentially. So what you're going to do is you're going to have to have a rod stand and once you have a rod stand whether it's a single or a three prong one like this one is you're going to hit nine and that's going to drop your rod stand and you'll be able to place it wherever you want so you can face whatever direction you're fishing. What the fuck? Get Fucking fishing plant, man. Okay, so pick out where you're gonna fish, right? And actually, I'm gonna swap over to shiners as well on this one. No, I'm not. I'll go back to small minnows because I don't think I have anything. Uh, we'll throw night crawlers on there as well. So one disadvantage to using um, a chum tube is every time you reel it in, you're gonna have like a five second pause. Uh, while your chum tube is being reloaded with chum. So that has actually screwed me out of fish before because I'm trying to reel fish in, reel fish in, reel fish in. I get them in, I hit keep, and it puts my rod away for five seconds and meanwhile my other bottom rod's going off and I can't pick it up because I'm reloading my fucking rod with, or my chum tube. <sighs> so, we're going to put both of these rods out and hopefully we'll be able to catch one quickly. That's another good tip right there that you see in the top. Press shift plus three um, to put your rod in a correlating rod stand. So, excuse me, I meant to pick up my other one. Here we go. So, once you cast your rod, and I'm going to be able to show you guys that I'm getting a bite right now. Um, once you cast your rod, you're going to look down at your rod stand and click to put it in there or you can hit shift one two or three and that'll put it into a correlating slot on the rod and holder <sighs> so what we're looking for whenever we're waiting on a bite while bottom fishing is our line to divert left or right now fishing in europe um, like in the canal and stuff it's very hard to see your line because it's so foggy out and there's no high vis line in this game now, if you watch my short rod there, you can kind of see the line shimmying a little bit. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, because I don't know how good of quality this is. But once that line starts shimmying just a little bit left and right, you want to start looking at it and start paying real close attention to it. Because that's an indicator that shit might be about to go down. So your line is going to traverse left or right. Um, sometimes both, it'll zoom one way then zoom the other and you're looking for an accelerated speed. Now eventually that line is going to get to an end point and your rod is going to snatch down pretty hard uh, towards one direction of you know, travel. So if the line's traveling left, eventually it's going to reach a point and that line is going to pull the rod tip down and you're going to very clearly see that something is pressing on the rod. Like right here Watch my tall rod. There goes my line. So I get my finger on four. And when it reaches that fulcrum there, and there it actually goes six too. So there's my four. Snatches down really well. Now I'm going to start reeling this fish. And I've got a set distance in my mind. You know, I'm trying to reel the fish 20 foot at a time. I'm fighting the fish 20 feet. 20 feet, and then I'm picking my other rod back up. I'm at 130, so I'm going to try and get the fish to about 110. 105 somewhere in there and then I'm going to pick my other one back up right you don't want to try and go too long don't try and fight the fish for too long because then you're going to end up losing them so I'll get this one to about a hundred you know I'm trying to fight the foot 20 foot or five second increments you know I want to get the fish in some you know know that I have them good I've still got tension on them and then I'm swapping back to my other rod so I know what numbers are correlated to my rod slots here so I know my tall rod's four, my short rod's six. So I got this fish at 20 feet. So I'm gonna get my other fish a little bit closer. And I know I can get this fish in on my tall rod. I'll get him in, I'll hit keep, and then I'm immediately tapping six. Trying to get back to the rod that the fish is on, right? I wanna get back to that one because I know it's fighting. So right now I'm catching two fish at the same time. I'm having two separate fights at the same time so I'm glad you guys got to see that <coughs> so you got to see a fish take the line 
you got to see what the bite looks like when you need to pick up the rod is when that rod tip bends over you know so be looking out for that bottom fishing is not that hard it's not that difficult of a system if you've ever done anything similar to it in real life you can do it in the game just as easily all it is is a carolina rig it's not hard right so if you guys have any questions on bottom fishing please let me know down in the comment section i'll be glad to answer any of them um i feel like i'm pretty knowledgeable on bottom fishing these days so <laughs> if you uh have any questions please let me know and uh if you enjoyed the video please subscribe let me know that you enjoyed it and if you're looking for some budget fishing gear check out the link in my description i've got some amazon associate links in there or affiliate links and uh you guys can pick up my favorite budget fishing gear because i'm a baller on a budget and i like cheap shit so you guys keep it crew i'll see you later